In my last video, I talked about a tool called Burp Suite, and I went over some of the ways that it can be used to test web applications. But I also wanted to go over a little bit of how you can use it with mobile applications, since mobile applications are kind of the focus of my career at this point. A while back, I did make a couple videos talking about using Burp Suite with Android apps. And in one of those videos, I talked about how you can install a Burp Suite certificate onto an Android device. The only problem is you do have to have a rooted device in order to get that certificate installed. And in some cases, you might just not have access to a rooted device for whatever reason, or maybe the application you're testing doesn't run on a rooted device. Luckily, there is another way that you can get that certificate installed on a device that's not rooted, and that's what I'm going to go over in this video. So in order to use Burp Suite with an Android application, we're going to need to have that certificate from Burp Suite and install it on an Android device. And in that other video I made several months ago at this point, we went through how we would install that certificate as a system certificate. And in order to do that, we needed root permissions because we had to access parts of the file system of the Android device that you don't have access to if you're not root. And the reason we needed to do that was because of changes that were made to the Android system and the way they handle certificates back in Android 7.0, aka Nougat. If you look at any sort of documentation or anything from back before Nougat came out, then you probably would have seen some tutorials and things that told you just install your certificate as a user certificate and you're good to go. But it's not quite that easy anymore. So the typical strategy is to install a certificate as a system level cert. But if we are in a situation where it's just not possible to run your application that you're trying to test on a rooted device, you can still use a user cert, which does not require root permissions to install, but we're gonna have to go through a few steps in order to get there. So for this example, I'm gonna use an app called Anchored, which is a retired challenge from Hack the Box. I might actually make another video pretty soon about Hack the Box and go into a little bit more detail about what it is and how it works. But all I need to know for this is that this APK has some pretty thorough root detection enabled, and we need to figure out how to intercept the requests and responses with Burp Suite without installing it on a rooted device. And since we can't make any of the changes to the file system of the Android device because it's not rooted, instead, we're going to make some changes to the APK itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is decompile that APK. So we're gonna run APK tool D anchored.apk. So now we have this directory called anchored, which includes all those files and resources and everything that were included inside that APK. So we're gonna to need to look at two different locations in this APK. First, we're gonna to go to the res directory. And if we look inside the res directory, we'll find the XML directory. So we're gonna look inside XML. And now in this example, they already have this network underscore security underscore config.xml file. In some APKs that you try this with, you might not see this file at all. And if that's the case, you can just create a new one with this exact same name. But if it already exists, we're just going to edit that existing file. So we're gonna open it with a text editor of your choice. I'm gonna use Vim, you can use Nano or whatever you prefer. And since this file already exists, most of what we need is already here, but I'm going to make two small little changes. For one, I'm going to delete this at raw slash certificate part. I could leave this as it is, but just for consistency, I'm going to change it just so this looks exactly like it would look for any other APK you wanna do this process for. And I'm gonna replace it with system and then i'm going to add one more line so now i have under the trust anchors section certificates source equals system and certificates source equals user if the apk that you're working with does not have this network security config file at all you would just create this file yourself and add this exact text into that new file. And now we're gonna save that file and we're gonna go back and we're going to look at the Android manifest file. So if you look in your Android manifest file and you do not see this text in here at all, then you would just locate the application tag right here and somewhere inside this tag, you would add this line of text right here. Android colon network security config equals at XML slash network security config. 
And now we need to rebuild our APK to include those changes we just made. So once again, we're gonna use APK tool, but this time we're gonna use the B flag for build anchored, which is the name of the directory of those decompiled files where we made our edits. And then I'm gonna do a dash O and then I'm gonna call it anchored-updated.apk for the name I want it to give the new APK it's gonna build. So now you might think that we're done, we've done everything we need to do to the APK and we can install it and we're good to go. Unfortunately, there is one crucial step we still need to do. If we were to try to install it, if I run adb install anchored-updated.apk, it fails. And the reason it fails is because there are no certificates. This APK is currently not signed. So we need to sign it before we can actually install it on our device. So in order to sign our APK, we need to use two tools. We're gonna to use key tool in order to actually create the key store. And then we're going to use APK signer to sign the APK. So to make our key store, we're going to run key tool dash gen key dash B dash key store, then the name of whatever we want to name our key store, I'll call it mine.keystore, dash key algorithm, RSA, dash key size, 2048, dash validity, we'll make it valid for a thousand days, why not? Dash alias, and then whatever you want the alias to be. So Android is what I'm gonna use. And it's gonna ask for a password, Give it whatever password you want to give it. And then it's going to ask you a bunch of information about your name, your organization, things like that. I'm just going to leave it as unknown. It doesn't really matter since we're just using this for our own personal use. It's going to ask you if all that information is correct. I'm going to type yes. So now it created my key store. So now that we have our key store, we can use APK signer to sign our APK using that key store. So we're going to run APK signer sign dash dash ks dash key dash alias and then we're going to give it the alias that we gave our key store i used android as my alias dash dash ks and then the name of our key store which was mine.keystore and then the name of the apk that we want to sign so that was anchored dash updated dot apk it's going to ask for our password that we just created and now our apk is signed and if I try to install it this time, anchor-updated.apk, success. So now that we have our APK installed on the device and we have it edited so that it will use user certificates, now we need to actually get our burp certificate installed on the device as a user certificate. So to get my certificate, I'm gonna open up burp. I'm gonna to go to the proxy tab, options, and then import export CA certificate. Click that export certificate in der format i'm going to call my certificate file burp.cer save certificate was successfully exported and i'm going to use adb to push my certificate file onto the sd card and if i go to settings security encryption and credentials and install certificate from sd card I see my certificate file right there. I'm going to name it Burp Suite, uh, Credential Use, VPN and Apps. Hit OK. And now my certificate should be installed. So now we just need to have our proxy listener enabled in Burp Suite and we need to point our Android device to that listener. I will say right here that I am using an Android Studio emulator for this example and this emulator is running on the same machine as my Burp Suite instance. So there are gonna be little details about how I set up the proxy listener that is specific to this kind of scenario. But because they're on the same device, I'm just going to have the proxy listener listening on the 127.0.0.1 port 8080. And I'm gonna set the proxy on the Wi-Fi network on the emulator to 10.0. .2.2 and that is a specific Android Studio emulator thing that they set up an alias that talks back to the 127.0.0.1. I think I went over this in an earlier video a while back. But if you were in a situation that would be very common that like you have a laptop that has your burp suite running on it and you have a physical Android device that you're testing with 
and both your laptop and your Android device are on the same Wi-Fi network. If you were in that kind of situation, then you would want to set your proxy listener on a specific address, and it's whatever the IP address of your machine is on that network. So for example, it could be something like 192.168.1.8, or whatever your IP address on that network is. And then on your Android device, you would set the proxy in the Wi-Fi settings to that same IP address so that it's talking to the IP address of your machine where you have Burp Suite running. But again, for this specific example, I'm using an emulator running on the same machine as Burp. So I'm just going to have it listening on 127.0.0.1, port 8080. And I'm going to set the Wi-Fi settings in my emulator to 10.0.2.2, port 8080. Now if I go back to my proxy and I turn the intercept on, I can launch the app and it asks for my email. I will just do test at test.com and request access. And I get that request. And now I see that there's this hidden message untrusted certificates and this is actually the flag that i was looking for in the hack the box challenge so if you were to go back to hack the box you could go to submit flag and then you could put this flag in here but this is a retired challenge so unless you had vip access you actually can't submit this flag but before it was retired this is the flag that they would have actually been looking for Again, I'll probably make another video pretty soon about Hack the Box and go into a little bit more detail about that because it is a pretty cool site and a pretty good learning resource. But I just wanted to make this video because I have come across a few situations recently where an app had pretty thorough root detection. And I just wanted to make a walkthrough of how you can set up an APK to work with a user certificate so you can intercept that traffic with Burp Suite or whatever other proxy tools you want without needing a rooted device.